How's it going today, guys? It's Blitzshots here, and I am bringing you a different kind of video. Today, we're going to be discussing Hogwarts Legacy. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And trust me, it gets plenty ugly. This is going to encompass about the first two hours of the game. And I got a couple of prefaces I want to bring forward before we actually jump into it. The first one is, is I don't do social media. Except with, you know, the idea of posting my own, about my own videos, or my own live streams. Uh, heck, I don't do social media to the point that on my personal Facebook page, I don't post squat on my personal Facebook page. It is there for people to get in contact with me, and that's it. And that's because I don't really care for the drama that social media brings into my life. I am not a drama person. I don't care for drama. I don't want to be a part of drama, generally speaking. But this time I can't escape it because I do really want to play this game. And I am aware of some controversy between J.K. Rowling and I, I believe it's the trans community. And I'm super sorry if I got that wrong. I'm not meaning to offend anybody and I am very sorry if that's wrong. However, I want to point out that I, I'm not for sure about this because I haven't uh, read anything on this drama. Uh, the only thing I'm aware of it is that YouTube is recommending me videos about said drama. Uh, and I haven't even watched those videos. That is what I've gotten from just reading the titles on the videos that it's recommending to me. And so I just want to say that here's my stance on any of this stuff. I don't care what people do with their own lives. It's your life. Live it. Just please have the same respect for me. I am happy for you to live your life however you see fit. It's your life, like I just said. I'm sorry if that stance upsets people or if they feel like I need to be, you know, pick a side and you're upset with me for it. I understand. I'm sorry that you feel that way. It's just not good for my mental health to jump into drama. This is just... It, it only makes me feel awful. And so I'm not going to jump into that game. I'm playing this game, though, because I love the Harry Potter series. The Harry Potter books came out at a time in my life where I was really getting into chapter books, and I wanted to read something and really sink my teeth into a world. And that's when Harry Potter came out. And I can tell you to this day, that Harry Potter is one of the reasons why I love RPGs. Jumping into a world, immersing myself, and really becoming part of that world. It's, it's one of the main reasons I got into books, and then later into video games. And so, I'm playing this game because it means that much to me. Because I love this series. I love this world. Regardless of the stuff that happens in real life, I love the ideas and the world of Harry Potter. End of story. That's that's the long and short of it. Now, the other thing that we need to discuss is that this I am playing the PC version of this game. So yeah, there are some things we gotta talk about. And thus far I've played up until the first time we go to Hogsmeade, which is again about two hours into the game. Um you could probably go there faster if you just beeline it there, but I, I like to explore. If you guys haven't noticed that in a lot of my other playthroughs, so uh, I've only made it to just before we would go to Hogsmeade. So let's jump into the bad, <laughs> and the bad is really bad. Uh, on the PC, there are frame rate issues that just plague this game. During cutscenes, I've seen people do flip books that have a higher FPS than this game does. And it's not like my game or my, my computer is awful by any means. I have a Ryzen 9 5900X and a 3070 Ti with uh, 32 gigabit, uh, gigabytes of RAM. 
my system is plenty strong. But the actual frame rate loss is just ridiculous. Jumping from 144 frames per second all the way down to 8 frames per second. In cutscenes, it looks bad enough. But when it happens in combat, <laughs> forget it. I would... I have a better chance of controlling my life in that game if I just alt F4 and exit the game. In fact, the frame rate has been so bad that I've actually replayed the first hour or so of this game five times on five separate occasions. I kept I would make tweaks and I wasn't happy with the frame rate of the game and I wanted to I want to be able to upload the game and and I in a you know, visually stimulating and appeasing way. I want to make sure that I, when I upload my, you know, my let my the playthrough and the guide of this game, people can actually watch it without feeling sick. And even after five times of restarting this game, I still cannot get it to not drop to 15 frames per second, 20 frames per second. And so I'm doing my best. But the worst of it is that on the fourth time I restarted this game, the game hard crashed. And it my whole computer shut down. It broke the game so hard that my computer shut off and I had to restart it. Turn it back on. I go to launch the game again. Thinking, oh man, I'll just, you know, Pick up the last autosave. Nope. It deleted all of my progress that I had made, which again, not much, but it hard deleted it. So, and, it, and Steam thought I had never played the game before. It literally broke in such a way that Steam didn't realize that I had ever launched the game prior. Even though at that point, if you went to my Steam page, you'd see that I'd played this game for about four and a half hours. But Steam also goes, no, no, he's never played this game before, not a single minute. Oh. Luckily, that is the worst of it. The rest of the game is actually really pretty fun. So let's go ahead and move on. We're going to talk about like the one thing I think is relatively mid in this game. And it's mostly because I'm not for sure how I feel about it. Leveling this game is tied to your wizarding field guide. And the point of this is, of course, to, you know, to bring, you know, have you explore the world and collect these sheets to fill out the guide. And you gain experience every time you pick one up. Every time you complete a challenge in the guide, you get some experience and you level up. You know, it's great because it gives you a reason to use the reveal spell they teach you right away and collect all these pages and you can learn a whole bunch of stuff about the paintings and the and the statues and stuff in Hogwarts. It's very interesting from a lore perspective and from somebody who really likes to explore it, it's great. The problem I have with it, though, is that I feel like every five feet I have to stop and use the reveal spell. I'll be off chance that I end up missing something. Now, I'm sure I'm going to come back and forth across these areas several times in this game. That's not what I'm trying to say. But if I, if I, I feel like if I don't use the reveal spell, I'm never going to actually find everything. And that's coupled with the fact that you can actually fast travel almost immediately in this game. And if you're fast traveling everywhere, how are you going to actually find this? You're going to have to stop, you know, story progression and side story progression specifically with the idea of doing puzzles and finding sheets around the world. Which for me is fine, because I like to explore anyway. It's fine, but it, I, don't, I don't know if everybody's going to enjoy that aspect of the game. And honestly, even still, to this point, I've, like I said, I've only you know gotten two hours in, and you use the summoning spell, Accio, multiple times just to pull sheets of air that are flying through the sky. Or sheets of paper that are flying through the sky point is, it's kind of repetitive in that way. I could see it, you know, this is a 30 hour game and I'm, you know, I'm only two hours in and I already think it's slightly repetitive. What am I going to think, you know, at 
when I've put in 15 times this amount of time, or if it lasts longer than 30 hours, you know, 20 times the amount of time. It just seems, you know, kind of crazy. Judges out on that one, but that's like the only real mid thing that I can think of. And so we're going to move on to the good stuff. And I'll be honest with you, this game is good. It is a good game. In fact, this is probably the best game that I've reviewed on this channel thus far. I'm only two hours in. I can't. I shouldn't really like say that, but this game is by far a well put together game. The combat is good. It's purposeful. It's smooth. Unless the frame rate hits you right in the middle of combat, that's pretty awful. But the actual combat mechanics are really well done. I haven't really had much of a reason to use the targeting system in the game yet because they're you know they're only ever fighting a couple of, of targets at a time right now. And honestly, the only real bad part about it is it feels very counter attack heavy. You pretty much could exclusively protect, use stupefy, and then spam the attack button. And you could probably get away with it for what feels like the entire beginning part of the game, if not more. Hopefully it gets more complicated and you actually have to like dedicate some thought to it, but you could totally just do that. You know, using the, the levitate spell, Levioso, and you know, lifting up opponents and disrupting their shields, and that, that's really fun, and it's really engaging in a lot of ways. The story details in this game, they're also really well done. Um, I can't remember the name of the horses, but at the beginning, when you when you watch the, the gentleman from the Ministry of Magic die, and you turn around and you see the horses that can only be seen by someone who has seen death, just, you know appear in front of you it's a really cool detail um you know the stories of, of st uh and details uh from the the wizarding field guide for statues and paintings you've seen also very intriguing um learning more about them conversations are you know feel really pretty fleshed out you get the information you need and you can ask them you know questions about themselves and you learn more about uh you know, the Weasleys or the, uh, or, you know, Professor Fig, uh, or, you know, any of these characters you run into, uh, it's really pretty well done. And it's also like, really fun to see, you know, the ancestors of characters from my beloved series, you know, seeing, you know, the ancestor of the Weasleys, seeing, uh, the ancestors of the Blacks, uh, you know, that kind of thing is really fun. And on top of it, you know, the castle is just huge. It feels huge. Um, you know, when you're watching the movies or reading the books, you always get the sense that the, the, the castle is bigger than life. It, there's constantly moving corridors and things to explore, and it's just how it constantly is, you know, piling on top of itself and ever expanding. And it feels that way when you're in the game. And that's great. And on top of it, if you don't like the system, it feels confusing. They give you a perfectly usable fast travel system immediately so you can jump to where you need to go need to go uh and so it's just really well done and then i mean let's let's not let's talk about the music here for a second okay i only have one note to say about it the music in this game is great so far it is nostalgic it is well done it is clear it is clean it is everything that I would want in this game. And so, overall, like I said, this game is a ton of fun. It's great. And I, I thus far, when the game is working, <laughs> this is by far the most got fun I've had with a game in weeks. And, you know, this is coming on the curtail of the fact that, you know, I'm still playing One Piece Odyssey. Uh, I just beat High on Life. You know, and before that, we were playing Benetta 3 and Sonic Forces and our Frontiers. And every one of those games, in my opinion, is not as fun as, a, uh, as this game is. And some of that made me nostalgia, since I really do like Harry Potter. But this game itself, the mechanics in this game are solid thus far. And I'd recommend it. But... 
I can't speak for the Xbox and PlayStation versions. Like I said, I am playing on PC. And until they fix the frame rate and the frame drops that happen in this game, I just cannot in good conscience tell anyone to buy the Steam version. Is it playable? Absolutely. The game is is totally playable. Most of the time. Those frame rate drops to 8 frames per second are awful. Um, I mean it when I said earlier that I have seen people make their own flip books that had a higher frames per second than this game runs at sometimes. After a patch, sure. They, and they, or after they band-aid the frame rate, maybe even. Yeah. It's probably worth it at that point. But before then, just wait. Wait for someone to put out a video saying, hey, this patch fixed it. It's all, that's all you need to wait for. When that happens, it's more than worth the, the $60 or $70 that you want to put into the game. That's all I have for it. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button, please. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be there you know, waiting to answer questions if anyone has any questions about the game thus far. And, uh, you know, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.